Have you ever heard the saying, knowing is half the battle? Well, in League, that's definitely true. Knowing the meta and picking what's good, as well as avoiding what's bad, is a super important part of the game. With over 160 champs on League's roster now, it can be tough to know what's what on your own. But don't worry, I've got your back. Today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.3. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. We'll also be highlighting some of the biggest change-ups in each role. For the stronger picks, we'll go over what makes them good, and also what their hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it, or what to pick when you're against it. And for any weaker ones, we'll talk about why they're struggling, and some alternative picks. So if you like them, you can find something similar to add to your chat pool. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. Up here, the first big change we'll be looking at is Olaf. We'll be promoting him up to the OP tier. If you're the type of player that likes to win all on your own, this is probably the pick for you. He's a very dominant laner with tons of all-in potential right from level 1, and he's very snowbally. This is a deadly combination, making it so that a single mistake from an opponent can lead to their lane phase being over and you taking over the whole game. Now, that said, there is one matchup that you should avoid as Olaf. When picking him, you'll want to ban Jax. While you can definitely punish a Jax that makes mistakes, if you're against one that really knows what they're doing, it's gonna be a tough one. His E allows him to trade against you early, and post 6, he can just Q away when you ult to wait out the timer. If you aren't able to get an early lead against him, it gets bad pretty fast. After one item, he starts to outscale you, rendering you useless in a side lane against him. Cassante is the other ship on the list we'll be talking about, but he's moving in the other direction. Cassante has fallen into the typical good and pro, meh and solo queue archetype. Even before this patch, he's had a negative win rate in anything under Master Tier. With the nerfs he's got, he's going to be basically unplayable. Between being so much squishier in his ult and his CC abilities being hit so hard, there's just not a lot he brings to the table. Instead of suffering on Cassante, here are a couple of strong alternatives. Sejuani is a tank, but not one where you just AFK farm and wait to scale up for teamfights. Like Cassante, she's scrappy, having a lot of solo kill pressure at all stages, especially when you run Ignite. Another good option is Kled. He's also very scrappy, with a lot of lane bully potential. Despite technically being a bruiser, he's super beefy, so you can still be a strong frontliner for your team, with his ult also serving as a great engage tool to start up teamfights. Now, here's our jungle tier list. The first pick here is Udir, who's moving up to the OP tier. He's right up there with Maokai for champs that are super overtuned right now, while also being insanely easy to pilot. You just walk around, slap things, things die, and you win. The jungle changes this patch favor farm heavy junglers just a little bit. Our Max Udir, which is how you should be playing him, has a very fast clear, so he'll be doing well with the changes. It sucks when you're playing well as a frontliner, but have no carries to kill the enemies. It also sucks when you're a big damage dealer, but have no frontline to peel for you. Well, with Udir, that doesn't happen. He's super BV and does a ton of damage, so you're able to fill two rolls at once. All of that said, there's one champ you definitely want to ban out if you're going to lock Udir. Wukong is not a great matchup. You can bully him hard early in the first few levels of the game, but as soon as he has his ult, he wins 1v1s and small skirmishes. And once he finishes Divine Sunderer, it's not even close. In the mid to late game, he also does a lot more than you in teamfights, and it's just not really possible for you to do anything about it. The next pick we have is Vi. She was super OP last patch with Radiant Virtue, but the adjustment it's getting this patch is definitely a nerf for her. That said, she still has plenty of other good options. There's other great tank mythics like Frostfire Gauntlet and Jack Show, or you can just go Divine Stranderer and Eclipse if you want something that gives you more of a carry approach to buy. The ability to flex between tankier and more damage-centric builds makes her a pick that fits into any comp. The same can be said for her ult. The point and click CC is just as good at locking down an enemy carry as it is peeling for her own, so you can swap between playstyles as you see fit. When picking Vi, the band you'll want to go with is Elise. Vi has a bit of a slow start, and Elise can abuse that hard. Between spam ganking lanes and invading you, she can keep you from ever coming online. What's worse, she can even cancel out your whole kit with Repel and Zonias. The last champ we'll be looking at in this role is Zac. We're counting the Radiant Virtue changes as an all-around nerf to Zac too, so he drops to the 8 tier. That said, he still has some very strong points going for him. His E gives him some very oppressive ganks once you get to levels 7 and 9, allowing you to come in from literally any angle on your ganks. This crazy engage range also makes him an incredibly good initiator later in the game. You should always be able to find some way into a teamfight. Once you do, you're able to be super disruptive, with his constant displacements and slows making it hard for the enemy backline to do anything in fights. When picking Zac, the go-to ban should be Udir. He beats you in fights at all stages of the game, with no room for you to outplay him. No skill here, he just slaps you, and you lose. 
He also outpaces your clear, so he can always be around to either counter your ganks, contest you at scuttle, or even invade you in your own jungle. Basically, you're entirely at his mercy if you end up in this matchup. Next up, we have our mid laners. Here, the first champ we'll be highlighting is Cassidy. After his nerfs dispatch, he'll be dropping down from OP to S tier, meaning he's still plenty strong. He works super well with the Rod of Ages and Seraph's Embrace combo, and the nerfs that he got directly aren't really all that bad. He's still one of the best scaling picks in the game, and despite being so strong late, he has a really strong lane phase against pretty much any mage. But one champ you absolutely do not stop is Tristana. She's an absolute must ban if you plan on locking in Cass. From level 2 onwards, she has insane kill pressure on you, making it hard for you to even move up to CS, and forget looking to roam to get fed. She'll have you under your tower the entire lane phase. The other mid laner we'll be looking at for this patch is LeBlanc. The changes she's getting this patch, specifically to her alt cooldown, should make it a lot easier to snowball. This is a big deal, since you need to get fed early to do well with this champ. She's so feast or famine that she can't really make it any higher than the B tier right now. But when you do have a good game with her, it feels super rewarding. LeBlanc is really good at working with her jungler to make plays. Her high burst and CC makes it easy for any champ to follow up and secure the kill. So with that in mind, you'll want to communicate with your jungler to set up plays a lot. If you can work with them to get ahead early, you can be a huge wrecking ball in the mid game, constantly deleting squishy foes you catch out all on your own. One champ you never want to go against as LeBlanc is Vex. Like I said, you need to snowball when playing LeBlanc, and Vex can easily make sure that doesn't happen. Her kit is pretty much meant to shut down assassins, and LeBlanc is no exception. Her shield shrugs off your burst, and her passive can stop you mid-dash if she times it right. She'll win every trade, and what's worse, she also has a way better wave clear. It'll be hard to ever find windows to roam, and when you do, she can easily follow you around the map. Let's move things down to the bot lane now. Here, the only champ we'll be highlighting is Kate moving up to the OP tier. Her extreme range makes her the premier bot lane bully, able to win any lane in a war of attrition. You'll quickly chip away at the bot lane tower, then rotate around the map and do the same in other lanes. She's already been a pretty strong pick lately, but she got even better last patch. Being able to go Infinity Edge second gives a much quicker power spike right after lane phase is over, so you can leverage early leads a lot harder on ADCs now. When it comes to what you should ban, Kate is so dominant that no ADC is truly that bad of a matchup. In a vacuum, there simply wouldn't be a losing one. But bot lane is a 2v2, so with that in mind, the ADC you just don't want to be up against is Tristana. She's the one pick that can solve the range issue by just jumping in on you. The slow from her jump allows her support to go in on you, and the pair can burst you down. And once you get behind Tristana in a kill lane, her super snowball-y nature can make it hard, if not impossible, to ever catch back up. Now, we'll round things out with our support picks. After what feels like years of Alistar being between meh and really bad, the buffs he's getting this patch are making him not just viable, but really strong. His kit inherently makes him a great pick for engaging and peeling, but now, you can actually get through the early game where he was really struggling. The AP ratio of his full combo is going up by an entire 70%. Between your support item and mythic, this is adding on a lot of damage. Now, he'll pair super well with kill lane ADCs, which are all super strong in the current meta anyways. When picking Alistar, the ban you should be going for is Braum. Anytime you go for a trade against a Braum lane, you're going to take a ton of damage back due to him slowing and stunning you. Even if you manage to land a full combo on his ADC, it won't change anything. All he has to do is jump to his carry and throw up his shield, and your carry won't be able to do anything to follow up on your setup. The second support we're looking at here is Braum. Braum has always been a champ that pairs super well with all types of ADCs. His W can be used to follow in an aggro ADC like Lucian or Tristana to go for kills, just as well as it can be used to protect an ally when they're the ones being jumped on. Being so flexible meant he was super OP, especially in pro play, and like all strong pro play picks, he was nerfed again and again until he was just really kind of meh. But these buffs should breathe some life into him. Making him so much more disruptive will make him a lot better, both in lane and team fights, so he can go back to being the god of disengage and peel. Heimer prevents you from ever being able to use any of your strengths, so this is the ban you'll want to go for when picking him. If you don't, you should get shoved in, constantly being hit with poke under your tower. And there isn't really anything to peel, since Heimer is doing all of his harass from long range. If you try to go in, you'll find it nearly impossible. Braum has a really unlucky interaction here. If you don't use your E, you take a ton of damage. But if you do use it, you're literally forced to take the stun from Heimer's grenade, since your shield will catch it, causing it to explode dead center on you. The last champ we'll be looking at for this patch is Rakan. Rakan has always been one of the best teamfight champs in the game. If used right, his R and W can set up huge wombo combos for easy wins in the mid to late game. But getting there has been tough lately. 
He's weak in lane, which usually leads to your ADC getting bullied hard, but this patch looks to fix that. With the heal on his Q getting a pretty fat buff, 2v2 should feel a lot more playable and you should actually be able to scale up pretty reliably. That said, playing against Alisar is still going to be super hard, so ban him out if this is your pick. Alisar's headbutt easily peels you when you look to go in, making it pretty much impossible to try to trade in lane. In teamfights, it's the same thing. He'll either headbutt you away as soon as you try to ult in, or if you try to get fancy and flash past him, he can just combo your team to stall their follow-up. With his ult making him so tanky, his team will easily get through you before your team can get through him. And that wraps things up for our 13.3 tier list. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, good luck out there on the Rift. Later!